Hello everyone and welcome to Vlogmas Day 12. Yesterday I was just making interval conversation with some of the cast and I said, you're 80 years old, you've had the career that you wanted, you've had all the success in musical theatre that you wanted to have, that you dreamt of having when you were a kid. You look back at your life, what would you say is your one biggest achievement? It could be something that's already happened in your life up till now as you are like present day or it can be something that you dream of happening. Like what is the one big thing? Sing it Alfie. What is the one big thing that you would look back on and go, oh my God, that is my biggest achievement. We had a lot of Broadway. There was a lot of being in an original cast, doing a cast album. Mine was, I don't know if you know this, but lots of theatres have rooms front of house where like special VIP guests get taken or so I think sometimes you can book them, but they're always named after actors and actresses. So there's like the Julie Andrews room at the Prince Edwards. I think there's the Maggie Smith room here. There's lots of rooms in the front of houses of theatres that have been named after actresses. I said I would love to have a room in a theatre named after me. So today I get to work and the toilet outside my room. Any sort of depth list today? Sylvia. Excellent. But then no bad news. Thank you, Danny Colligan. Got to work today and Bradley Jaden, who plays Andras, um, has managed to get the entire cast these soft straws from Rayvox. I've never had a straw specifically for this, but I do bubble is what we call it. And it's basically where you get a big straw and you put it in water and then you go Ooh. So you're like blowing bubbles into the water but you're not just going like you're blowing in pitch, if that makes any sense. But this company have made straws specifically for this use and they come in these little like things. I'm just really impressed with these. They have not asked me to post about this. I am not sponsored by them. I have been gifted, but via Bradley Jaden. Um, but look how pretty they are. They're like rainbow, metallic rainbow colored straws and they extend. They also come with this little extendable cleaner that comes inside it neatly packaged but it comes with this handy leaflet it's now my pointer um that tells you which extension gives you the most resistance the least resistance so i am just a massive fan of this um this is i feel like this is going to absolutely revolutionize my warm-ups um i will let you know more when i've properly tried and tested it but i know that i'm very excited when I asked for the theatre assumptions questions on my Instagram, I also just replied to a few on Instagram, and one of them was, do you get free ice cream in the interval? Can I turn that down? I've got a constant battle with these tannoy systems at the moment. Someone asked me, do you get free ice cream in the interval? And I said, no, I wish. That's like one of my favourite assumptions, because I wish that were true. Um, because for those of you that don't know, in the interval, ice cream sellers go out into the auditorium and sell ice creams in like little tubs and I said no I wish we did just as I'm coming upstairs after my ensemble track to get into my Fontaine ghosty stuff I passed my company manager's office and she's like Carrie do you want a do you want an ice cream and I was like have you looked at my Instagram like ha ha very funny and she was like no we've got some spare ice creams from front of house do you want some I'm just asking anyone who happens to go past if they fancy an ice cream so um Thank you, company manager Katie, for the Hagen Dahl's ice cream. The universe rewarded me with a free ice cream today. So thank you, universe, and thank you to whoever asked that question because this is an absolute win. Yesterday I said, in an Instagram story that I was gonna have some potato and leek soup and I got a lot of very angry people telling me that it's leek and potato. Aside from the fact that it's potato and leek soup because that's what it said on the Heinz tin and when I tagged Heinz, they messaged me back and backed me up which is hysterical, the fact that Heinz, Heinz messaged me on Instagram. Um, but I was told something very interesting by Heinz. They said that you have to list the main ingredient in a soup or in whatever first 
just to make sure that there's no misconceptions or it's not misleading. So it has to be potato and leek because potato is what bulks out the soup. If they called it leek and potato, it'd apparently be very misleading. So if you put more leek in your soup, then it is leek and potato soup. But in the case of Heinz, it is potato and leek. We are between shows on our first double show day and um, I woke up this morning with the worst headache I've had in ages. It's definitely muscular. I sleep like this, like a little goblin. So when I wake up in the morning, all of this is just so tense and so painful. So I came in with this, this little microwavable heat pack around my neck. And for the first time in my entire life, I fell asleep on the tube. I've never fallen asleep on a tube train before, ever. I'm too scared of doing that in case I miss my stop. Luckily, my train was terminating at the stop that I needed to get off at, but I fell asleep. I think I was even snoring. I literally was like, just head down, fast asleep. Don't know what's come over me. Um, I feel fine now. I, I literally bought with me the entirety of my, my medicine cabinet. So I've got Nurofen migraine pain, some Paracetamol Plus, and a muscle pain relief cream, which I've got smothered over me right now. Um, but yeah, fell asleep on the tube, what the hell? Something fun I will show you. For some reason, when we got to our dressing rooms, there were these two blue envelopes, one for me, one for Charlie, on the table, and they just contained a singular Kleenex and a tea bag. I don't know who left them, I don't know why these seem like the essentials <laughs> that we need, um, but I've been using this to put all of my COVID negative result wristbands in um, because you know me, I'm gonna scrapbook them at some point. Um, but it'd be also interesting just to see how many I end up with. I think at the moment I've, I've had 15 COVID tests, like rapid COVID tests. That's a lot of brain tickling, a lot of brain tickling. My current issue is that I've suddenly realised that Oliver and I are going to be alone for Christmas. Uh, which is fine, it's going to be lovely, I think we're going to have a lovely time. It's a shame that I probably won't be able to see my family, um, just because of how bubbles are working out and just all that kind of stuff. Um, but that means we're going to be in charge of Christmas dinner for the first time in our lives. So I'm having to order Christmas supplies like a turkey crown that will feed the two of us and vegetables and bacon and sausages to do pigs and blankets and potatoes and stuffing and all that kind of jazz. I've never done this before and I've definitely left it too late to order this stuff for the Christmas few days. So I could go to my local butchers, that's an option. I could order food to come on the 19th, that's the latest that I can get it but then Unless I freeze everything, will it keep until the 25th? I don't know, we're gonna have to figure out some kind of plan, but it's exciting slash terrifying, because I know what I'm like. I am the person who looks forward to a day so much that if something goes slightly awry, it's ruined, it's all ruined, it's ruined, it's ruined, it's ruined. I put so much pressure on days to be perfect that if something minuscule goes wrong, I'll be devastated. <laughs> so trying not to do that, but also trying to just make sure that we have enough food and Christmas themed food that it's a, you know, a decent meal. It's not a huge disappointment. It's trying to find the balance between not having to have the day go completely perfectly and not having the day be a complete and utter disappointment. I'm gonna go because my potato and leek soup is ready. And tell me in the comments what your plan for Christmas is, especially if you were the one who does Christmas dinner. I want to know, I need tips, I want to, I just want to know. I mean, Oliver's going to be the one doing the cooking because I am not the cook in the family at all. I'll do like the Christmas pudding and I'll make something, I'll make Millionaire shortbread again or something, you know, I'll make a gingerbread house. I'll, I'll have dessert covered and I can do all like the pigs and blankets and stuff like that. But when it comes to the turkey and the potatoes and all that kind of stuff, that's all Oliver. <laughs> that's all him but I would still like to hear what you're going to do for Christmas and what your plan is during this very very strange 2020 covid christmas see you tomorrow